Alright, hello guys, how's it going? In today's video, we're going to be taking a look once again at the tropics and updating you guys on what's going on over there. For today's comment of the day, I want to know, do you think this system has any chance of developing in the Gulf? Let me know in the comments down below and I'll be picking one of those for tomorrow's video. Now let's get straight into this video. And first things first, we're taking a look at the two-day graphical tropical weather outlook in the eastern Pacific, because if you saw yesterday's video, we're not expecting this one to begin in the Atlantic. It actually, if anything, is going to cross over from the Pacific over Mexico into the Atlantic, specifically the Gulf of Mexico. As you can see, it's that easternmost system, actually, so the 30% chance system that we're mostly worried about here. Uh, so it does have a 30% chance of development within the next two days, which would give us a better picture by tomorrow. So if this one was to develop today, uh, we would have a much better idea of, of its track uh, and projected intensity, things of that nature. So we're going to be watching very closely for that. Regardless, over the next five days, as you can see, this one has a 50% chance of development. So inc increase to the, to the percent chance here a lot over the next five days. Uh, so that's a that's a coin flip right there, guys. So that is actually a significant jump from the percentages yesterday. Uh, and we're going to be watching this one extremely closely, obviously, as there is that chance it first off hits Mexico to begin with. And then there's also a chance it has impacts beyond that as well if it enters into the Gulf afterwards. So multiple different uh, levels of potential impacts with this one. We have our satellite imagery here now, which is really cool because we can see this one now that it's actually a system. It actually is an invest. I think it's 93. Uh, so we'll be taking a look at that in a minute as well. But this is the satellite imagery. You can see that it's not very organized, but we do have some taller areas of clouds here, specifically that one on the very uh, top side of the screen there. Um, and you can see some of those whites, those grays, and even those little pinks showing up in between. That is some very tall clouds in there. Um, so we're going to be watching that as it develops. We'll be probably taking a look at this tomorrow as well. So we'll be able to update you guys on the satellite imagery uh, and probably compare today's to tomorrow's things of that nature. Now we can even get spaghetti model guidance. And yeah, I was right. This is invest 93 E. So this is first off our GFS ensemble model spaghetti model guidance. So an ensemble model is actually 30 different members. Uh, so really what this is, is basically giving us an idea uh, of what each individual member, all 30, are showing. So each little spaghetti noodle, if you will, uh, is a different model of the ensemble model, a different member. Uh, and as you can see, we have a handful of models or members that take this into the uh, Gulf of Mexico. One specifically takes it towards Florida as a stronger low pressure system, as we'll be watching for that one. But generally, you can tell the blue line uh, and the the blue line is the control, and then the black line there, if you can see that one, is the mean average of all of them. So you can see that that is basically heading towards Mexico, closer to Mexico. Uh, so there is, again, that just, just that chance generally that it does cross over. Now what we're going to do here is we're going to move on. And we're going to move on towards the Canadian ensemble model, and then we're going to move on to all of the individual models as well. Take a look at that. And then the intensity guidance from these models as well. And then we're going to start talking about some other things. I also want to let you guys know, a lot of people have com been complaining about the audio. I put in an order for a brand new microphone, uh, a $100 microphone this morning, which is actually a pretty big upgrade from the one I'm using and have been using for years. Uh, this one over time has gotten worse and worse. So I don't know if microphones just deteriorate over time. If anybody knows anything about that, let me know in the comments down below. But I had no idea that they get worse and worse, but it just has in general. My videos used to sound a lot more better in general, and now when I listen back to them, I'm like, eh, they could definitely be better, uh, to say the least. So I put it in order for a much higher quality microphone. It even has a cover this time uh, that should also make it sound a lot more crisp and just smooth in general. Uh, so we will be waiting for that. That should be here on June 16th. So we will have about five more videos until then. But it is coming. I have heard you guys, and I am getting a new microphone. Just want to let you guys know I'm not ignoring that. I am trying to improve the quality over here. Uh, it's just been a long time coming. Now, here is the Canadian model's ensemble model. And as you can see, this one also has quite a few members actually heading back westward, which would obviously mean this does not go to the Atlantic. But it does have a handful of members that also take it into uh, the Gulf of Mexico as well. 
Uh, so there's multiple things going on here. Uh, and then also here is our, uh, basically all of our in individual models here. And as you can see, a lot of these just take it into Mexico where it basically just fizzles out. But a lot of these take it into the Gulf and it curves back towards Mexico. Uh, that is about 96 to 120 hours out, which is pretty far. Uh, so it's hard to say if it will certainly do that or not. But the general, I guess, majority here are taking it towards the Gulf of Mexico here when we take a look at the individual models, which is quite interesting uh, to say the least. There is a couple that take it in that more western track back up west, uh, kind of cutting along the coast of Mexico there, but generally heading away from the warmer waters, and it would probably dissipate the further north it goes. So we will be continuing to watch all of these things. Uh, here's the intensity guidance, and as you can see, basically only one of these takes this towards tropical storm status at this point, uh, and it reaches that within the next three days. So take this with a grain of salt, considering it's one out of like 10 here. Uh, but this one also takes it towards a Category 1 by the time we're reaching hours 168, which is also something you want to take with a grain of salt. Most of these keep this at a very high-end tropical depression, trying to reach tropical storm status, but can't quite do it. I'm guessing what's going on here, in my opinion, is the ones at the bottom are not taking this into the Gulf, so it never reaches those very favorable warm waters in the Gulf. Uh, but that one, the ship model probably does take it towards the Gulf. That's my guess at this point. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to move on, and we're going to take a look at the, the water temperatures that are around for the Gulf and everything, and then we're going to take a look at what the European and the GFS model have to say as far as, you know, what this looks like on our vorticity, which gives us a good idea of where the storm is and what the impacts could be like. Now, first off, the European model, we're taking a zoomed out look, but you can see that in the southern Gulf, we do have some reds going on. So let's just take a zoomed in look, actually, just zoom in. And you can see there's even some purples in there. This cyclonic vorticity that we're taking a look at here basically just shows us how much spin there is in the atmosphere. Uh, large scale spin. Uh, so this isn't like tornadoes or anything. This is mostly much more larger scale things like a tropical system perhaps that is spinning on a very much so larger scale. Uh, so this is actually showing us there towards the bottom of the Gulf that there is some sort of spin to that system down there, that low pressure system that has crossed over into the Gulf, by the way, on the European normal model as of our 6 Z, or sorry, this is our 0 Z run. Now, as we reach Tuesday or afternoon, so that was Saturday afternoon. This is Tuesday afternoon. So we're taking a massive leap over the weekend into the early week, and it hasn't moved very much. This, this model just keeps this tropical activity in the Southern Gulf around, and it could be a storm that is completely dissipated and then reforms. I don't exactly know. All I do know is it does have a system coming out of the southern Gulf eventually and heading north, uh, which is basically a bad trajectory. And this is by the very early a.m. hours on Thursday, by the way. Let's call it Thursday at about 2 a.m. And that is going to be June 17th. I will have a new microphone by then, <laughs> by the way. Uh, and then eventually we see this one by Friday morning at about 2 a.m. It's kind of curving back towards Louisiana and Texas. And then eventually it hits Louisiana and Texas. So take that with a grain of salt because basically we're not even that confident that it's going to head into the southern Gulf, let alone where it's going to go after that point. I'm just trying to show you guys what the European model says for now, especially so we can look back and rank the accuracy later on. But it's, you know, that far out and that low confidence, I doubt that that is going to resemble much of what happens uh, beyond the point of reaching the southern Gulf of Mexico. That's the important thing. Beyond that is kind of a shot in the dark. The GFS model has some tropical activity as well. We see all of this rotation, uh, but it's never quite as strong, and it does eventually by about Friday late morning, 10 or 11 a.m. there on June 18th. It does have something heading towards the Gulf Coast, uh, but it's just nothing like what the European model showed, and eventually this reaches inland as well. Uh, but yeah, so the European model has a much more organized tropical system in the Gulf, hitting the Gulf Coast. The GFS model has a much more broad area of rotation that never really gets its act together quite like the European model does. Anyway, for our confidence tab today, we're sticking with a 3 out of 6 until we see any sort of a sign that this is 100% heading into the Gulf, or at least, you know, a, a more chance than not that it's heading into the Gulf. Uh, so if it's kind of the you know, majority are showing this of the spaghetti models, that's when we will probably upgrade to a four uh, or a five. Anyway, for today's comment of the day, I asked you guys yesterday, do you think that this is our last storm for a while or our last tropical system for a while? Uh, if so, when do you think it'll, you know, lift off again? And James Marr said, I think 
it will become quieter after this till about early July, then take off. And that is a pretty common time frame there uh, for July to be when things kind of pick up. So I would not be surprised if we see a quieter June outside of this storm and maybe one or two others. Uh, but maybe July gets a little bit more active, as James Moore said. So good comment of the day there. Anyway, for today's patron highlight of the day, I want to thank you all for supporting the channel, but especially our platinum patrons, John Ben Benick, James Wade, Dovey Nagel, Larry the Pan, and Donna Carnes. Alongside our Diamond Patrons, Bill Roberts, Marcus Connolly, Noah Harley, Michael Cotalesa, Cat Bite, Charles Stinnett, Cindy Klein, Mark J, Luke Flagos, Gary, John Colisi, Dwight Phelan, and Stephen Cronenthal. If you would like to be part of this patron end screen of the day, you can do so by joining our very exciting Patreon page in the description and in the pinned comments down below. I would also like to thank our channel members, our Weather Top Dogs, Hair From's One, and Cat Bite as well. This will be located next to that subscribe button if you are interested in joining that as well. Anyway guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Be sure to destroy the like button. Be sure to leave a comment down below because that helps this channel out so much. And also be sure to subscribe if you like weather related content. I will see you guys in the next video.